Well, hello and welcome uh, on this Wednesday. We are delighted that you have tuned in to be with us. Just a couple of things. Uh, this is spring break for a number of people, certainly is here for Preble Shawnee, and uh, some are entering spring break next week, which is the week, uh, two weeks prior to Easter. The uh, Palm Sunday is the 10th, Easter is the 17th, and we're looking forward to uh, a wonderful celebration of the cross, the empty tomb, and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Keep in mind that on April 13th, on Wednesday evening, we're going to be observing the Lord's Supper in that Wednesday night service. So I hope many of you, uh, especially those that normally don't come on Wednesday, I pray that we just have a, a good crowd uh, as we observe the Lord's Supper together on that Wednesday night. Also, uh, this weekend, we welcome our new associate pastor, Cody McPherson, along with his wife, Sarah, and their two precious girls, Nora and Claire. And we are looking forward to them becoming part of our family. And I know that you're going to help them just like you helped me 29 years ago. And uh, this is going to be a new day in the life of our church. So we pray for Cody as he, as he uh, begins his new ministry here. Uh, we pray that God would just be all over it, and our, our kids' ministry just takes a, a huge step forward as we look at discipling these precious gifts that God has given us. Um, also this Saturday, uh, the 2nd, at 10 o'clock, we're going to be uh, distributing door hangers to the village residents here in Camden. Um, we got a nice little packet, as I showed you on Sunday. Uh, that's going to be uh, a nice tool. Let me see if I can get this out. Um, it's got uh, right off the bat this blue slip that says, do you have plans for Easter? Do you have a home church? If the answer is yes, amen. If you don't, let us invite you to join us here in Camden at the First Southern Baptist Church for worship. Here's what you can expect. People just like you, a friendly welcome, a wonderful time of worship through music, a message of truth and hope preached from the Word of God, uh, and then Sunday school at 945, children's church at 1045. Got a worship schedule on it and directions. So that's on top. Also, the truck stop has made available these Gospel of John's. And I appreciate Ken and Donna Tillery for doing all the legwork of packing. And I appreciate the hard work from Judy here in the office who has not uh, only added Steps to Peace with God that uh, the Tillery's put in. It's a Billy Graham track. It's one of my favorites. It's so simple. But uh, Judy put in uh, microwave popcorn. It's uh, Acacia has created this little uh, uh, catchy little hope you can pop on by. It's got our website, February or April 17th, and then it's attached to uh, microwave popcorn. So all that will go in each bag and uh, as far as we can go, and uh, we're looking forward to Saturday. So if you can join us at 10 or in fairly good health to walk, we could really use you. Uh, you might even uh, make yourself available to drive because we've noticed that when we put the popcorn in the bags, they become heavier and bulkier and, and you can't carry as many as you can just flat. So. Anybody that can help, 10 o'clock Saturday this week, the more we have, the quicker the job gets done. But it's another reminder to our community that God loves them, we love them, and that Easter is a special time because that hope, uh, hope hung on the cross. And by faith, we can accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So uh, be in prayer for that, okay? Uh, tonight is the visitation for Gina Spradling and pray for them. Uh, today is the funeral for Ron Stewart, the pastor from High Street. Uh, just a, a lot going on. So uh, let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for letting us serve you. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will lead us today as we open your word. And we thank you for everything that you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. I just realized that my alarm is set to go off uh, when the baptistry is ready. Uh, we're going to baptize this Sunday. So if you hear that, don't let it be a distraction, okay? So, hey, if you have your Bible, uh, I want you to join with me in Matthew chapter 5. I want to read a few verses. We're just about done with our study at 1030 and 6, uh, 6, 633. 
in, re, in regards to the battle plan for prayer. And it's been rich, and I really, I really sensed that God is up to something. We're, we're kind of moving a little bit in uh, the area of prayer and the worship service, and I, I love it. And we're just going to ask God to continue to help us grow in the area of prayer. But in Matthew chapter 5, it's, it's uh, the Beatitudes. It's Jesus' great sermon on, on the mount. And uh, I want to read uh, just a few verses for you. They're familiar. They're at the end of the Beatitudes where Jesus is saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. After that list that he uh, records in Matthew chapter 5, uh, down at verse 13, he says, To those disciples, you are to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And then he says, You are the light of the world. Christians, you, as a believer, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, he calls us to go public with our faith. Now, people say, well, Brother Greg, I believe that uh, prayer is a personal thing. Or, I'm sorry, that salvation is a personal thing. It is. Nobody can be saved for you. It's you accepting what Jesus did for you on Calvary by faith. The Holy Spirit convicting your heart and you accepting God's work on the cross. That's private. That's personal. But a personal decision is never to be kept to yourself. We're called to go public with our faith. The first, first step here is a person may make their decision public during an invitation. Uh, sometimes a person is baptized. and uh, Well, first of all, we believe every believer should be baptized. Amen? It's a personal expression. You're going public with your faith. Uh, it's an outward sign of an inward change. Jesus said, if you confess me before the Father, or if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. So it is personal. When somebody says, well, I believe uh, Christian Christianity, and uh, I, just, you're, I believe that's personal. Well, it certainly is. I agree with you 100%, but it's never meant to be kept private, according to the New Testament. So Jesus is saying uh, that you're the salt of the world, you're the light of the world, and then he says a city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. So when you give your life to Christ, it comes out, okay? The fruit of the Spirit works its way out. Now, I'm not saying you work your way to be saved. We know that's not true. You can't do enough. If you could be saved, you could lose it. Or if you could be saved by something other than the cross of Calvary and the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, folks. When Jesus died on the cross, he died once and for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So Jesus isn't going back to the cross. Okay? And he says a city that's set on the hill cannot be hidden. So a city on the hill, the most common thing is to, uh, to be seen, to be lit up. Nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but you put it on a lampstand. So a light is meant to shine. This morning here at church, I got here early uh, before, before daylight and, and uh, went over to the other building, noticed that it had not been lit up at night, the fellowship hall outside. Went inside and looked at the fuse box and noticed that the uh, plug for the outside lights was just simply unplugged. Uh, and I thought, well, that's interesting. Uh, the light by the side door in between the buildings of the fellowship hall hadn't been coming on. So I changed the bulb, and guess what? It had simply burned out. Lights m are meant to shine. And uh, uh, lights, lights shine the brightest in the darkness. And we're living in a day, listen, where there's a great need for Christians just to stand up and be light. Now, some of you watching this have been deliberating about coming back to church. And all I want to do as your pastor is encourage you to. Okay? If you're physically healthy, uh, listen, I encourage you to come back. 
our, our numbers have been growing. Of course, spring break, we were down a little bit. But uh, people are coming back, and, and this is just, just a great time to get back to church as we head into uh, Passover and uh, we look at the celebration uh, that takes place, reminding us of the cross and the blood applied to the doors, reminds us that we're saved by the grace of God, and without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Uh, Easter is a great time just to get back. So I want to encourage some of you, okay, um, to just make a decision and uh, come back and, and be with us in person for worship. And uh, what I'd love to see is that online viewing come down as more people get back to church. So uh, I hope you'll consider that. Love to see you and maybe even see some of you this weekend. So the picture here is uh, that when you become a Christian, it shows. And then that precious Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and pat you on the back? No. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So as we kind of conclude this study here uh, on Wednesdays, uh, we'll go next week as well. In this regard to prayer, uh, this past week, one of the days we spent in our discipleship and in our workbook was about when we pray, pray offensively. Okay? Now, offense and defense. Uh, I told you before, my mom played basketball in high school when, it, when they could only play at one end. So you're either on the offensive end or the defensive end. Literally, they played half court. So my mom played defense, and I, I believe she did. And the hard thing about playing defense is that you never, you never get to shoot. They say in, in, that, in sports and basketball, a good defense wins games. Well, not if somebody can't make one layup or one foul shot. Somebody has to score, right? So when you pray offensively, you're praying that the Lord would be glorified in what people see in your life. Not, not pats on the back. Listen, we got to get over this. we got to outgrow this in church life that everything we do, uh, somebody has to pat me on the back for it. Because if that's the case, then really I'm serving for the praise of men, not the Lord. We recognize this past week, this, this Sunday we had, uh, this past Sunday, six folks finished First Connection. We'll present them this week. And uh, one of the spiritual gifts is the service helps. And when you look at the gift of service helps, that's the kind of person that says, whatever needs done, how can I help? And oftentimes the person with that gift is never looking for any kind of recognition. They're simply doing it to serve the Lord. And that's what I believe Jesus is talking about. Let your good works, let your light shine so that people see Jesus. And, and my prayer is, when we think about our prayer life, that our prayer life would not just be a grocery list of, Lord, would you answer these prayers? It simply would be, Lord, may I glorify you with even what I'm requesting. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, another thing that they suggest here is um, praying preemptively before it happens. Not once you get in a jam, but before the day starts. God, you know what's in front of me. Uh, a lot of times for Chief Spurlock and the police department, my prayer for them is that God would give them wisdom and safety and discernment for the day ahead. Now you thank the Lord for yesterday, right? But what about today or tonight? You thank the Lord. There have been many times as your pastor when I have dreaded a meeting or a confrontation about something, and I've prayed about it, and God has already answered before the meeting takes place, just in the way uh, we interact in the discussion. You can tell that God's already been there. He's already, he's already handled it. Well, when you pray preemptive, preemptively, we've got to, we've got to pray about some things that we know can be 
real. Here's, here's the first, okay? I won't spend much time on it. Distractions. Mark it down. If you decide to get serious about your prayer life, the devil will use distractions. He may use a busy phone call. This morning my cell phone rang at 829 and I realized it was one of the telemarketing calls. That, and so see, they're starting their day trying to hit people that won't re return a call. Uh, distractions. Listen to what David wrote. I am restless in my complaint and am surely distracted because of the voice of the enemy. I sent that to my preacher friends this morning. Psalm 55, verses 2 and 3. I am restless and I'm distracted because of the voice of the enemy. And that's exactly what the devil wants to do. Amen. And, and my prayer is that you would j just make a decision about some things that are distractions. For instance, if your phone, if you're glued to your phone, as I am many times like you, and you know, sometimes we're easy to, to uh, uh, pick somebody else apart and say, well, they're on their phone all the time, or they're on Facebook all the time, or, or something. But if you look at it, we're all glued to our phones in many ways. And uh, it can be a distraction. So silence it. Put it on airplane mode. Don't let the devil interfere with what, what needs to take place in your life, and that is the discipline of prayer. And when that becomes a priority, I believe you're going to see God do some things in your life that are really going to energize us spiritually, um, certainly in the life of the church corporately, right? And uh, now I, I know I'm not, I'm not naive enough to, to think that when, when I preach that some of you aren't looking at your text messages and, and things like that. But, but let, me, let me tell you something. The Word of God, worship of a holy God, listen to me, is worthy of our attention. So if maybe that's you, I want to ask you not to do that. Unless you're expecting an emergency call from home, He is worthy of our attention. So I close with this. God, may my heart's affection and my mind's attention be set on you. And help me pray. And help me be a light on a hill. And let my light shine before men that they see my good works and not pat me on the back, but glorify you who are in heaven. If you're watching this and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I would love to talk to you about that. But even where you're at today, you can bow your head and pray, Dear God, thank you for loving me. I believe you died on the cross for me and my sin. And I ask you to come into my heart right now. Help me to live for you. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, or maybe you've got other questions about your faith, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, our website is camdencornerofhope.com. You'll see a fill info button on the front page. It's blue. If you click that, you can give us your name, email address, comment, prayer request. Uh, you can request more additional information, uh, anything about the church, and we would love to converse with you about that. So listen, you have a great day in the Lord, and uh, remember this, until He comes, we will go. God bless you. Have a great day.